In this presentation, we will use tax software to consider the adjustment for AGI, adjusted gross income related to educator expenses. We will be using Lacert tax software owned by Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks. We will be looking at the forms that will be generated from it. The act of entering data into software and then generating forms with it will be similar for other types of tax software as well. Here we are on our 1040. We have our mock client uh, for James Smith, single filing status. We're going to scroll down. We're going to say that we have 100,000 as the W-2 type income. That's all we have thus far. We got the standard deduction of the 12,200. We're concentrating here on line 8A. And we're going to say that they're an educator. Now, if they're an educator, it's pro they probably don't have 100,000 <laughs> on their W-2 income. But uh, they, we're going we're gonna to say that this is from the education expense. Now, if you have an educator where they tell you that they're going to be a teacher or instructor from kindergarten to 12th grade then your your thought is that you should you should go in and add this now this isn't a huge deduction but it's going to be helpful so any anytime you hear that you, you say okay this person is in uh, education or you see a w-2 that's going to be uh, a school then you would think okay now i might go in there and have a potential deduction and it's going to be an above the line deduction and therefore not subject to the the itemized deduction types of limitations remember this is a deduction that was put in place a while back hasn't been taken away it hasn't been increased for things like uh, inflation as well so it has a fairly low cap that being at the 250. so if you have someone that's an educator they probably have spent more than that if they qualify for the deduction in terms of being a, an instructor they probably have more than that in terms of what they have spent so they just need to be able to track that to uh, up to 200 you know the 250 limit they can't deduct more than that uh for, in order to qualify for this deduction so we're going to go then to schedule one where would this be applied we're going to go to schedule one we're going to be on part two and this one's right up top we got the educator expenses number line 10. so we got it right up top we're going to going to jump to that i'm going to go to right click the software jump to the input screen it's going to take us to the input screen educator expenses now it's capped at 250 let's just see that if we had 500 of qualified educator expenses and you'd have to ask the client for that do you do you have you, they would have to add those things up you'd have to you wouldn't have any kind of documentation for it you would see as a w-2 employee that they are an educator you can then ask them do you have expenses that you paid out of pocket that weren't reimbursed by the school for specifically education typically that will be the case if you have supporting documentation for that, then we can have up the 250 deduction. If they come back and say, well, I have 500 of qualified expenses. Well, that's fine. We can put that in the data input software. And then note when you go to the forms, it's going to cap it at the 250 because that's, that's going to be the cap. So 250 is going to be the cap. Be aware of that as you, as you enter the data. So you can, you know, talk about that uh, with a client or yourself as you, as you gather that information. And then uh, that's going to flow forward to the 1040 page one. So if we go back to the 1040, we got the 100,000 of income. We got the 250, which is going to be the line 8A adjustments to income from schedule one. That brings the AGI adjusted gross income to 99,750. Standard deduction 12,200, bringing the taxable income down to 87,550. That, of course, being the number that the tax rates progressive tax system would then be applied to.